Today I'm filming from Paradise Wildlife Park where we're here for the celebration of Speedway, an annual event run by the WSRA. It was just £12.50 per person to get into the museum, the wildlife park and the dinosaur trail as well as the celebration itself. For me, it was just £50 for a family day out. You can't really complain about that, can you? The weather wasn't the best on the day, but it was the middle of February, so I can't say I'm shocked. After all, you aren't a true Brit if you don't venture out in the cold and wet. We arrived at the park and the resident groundkeeper greeted us before venturing into the Speedway Museum area, which is where the celebration itself was based. The celebration had market stalls, bikes on display from every era, plenty of riders around to chat and get pictures with, there was a Speedway memorabilia auction and a chance to hear the vintage bikes during an hourly bike warm-up from the temporary pit area. Aside from the standard catering facilities available at the park, there was a lovely marquee set up for a barbecue to keep everyone well fed through the event. The WSRA claim it's the social event of the year and it's hard to argue with that. There are riders, mechanics, promoters and various contributors to the sport socialising with fans everywhere. Everyone here was talking about their methanol fuelled addiction the perfect place to be for any Speedway fan. You can pick up memorabilia from all areas of the sport, ranging from scarves, hats, clothing to programs, race jackets, badges and even DVDs. In the first ever auction we heard loads of memorabilia being sold off that was fantastic but just there wasn't enough room to display it and it wasn't likely to be displayed in the museum. There were loads of collectors and Speedway fans making bids and all of the proceeds were going to the WSRA. This money is of course what's used to upkeep the museum. With the bikes you had all of the classics, the Westlakes, the Japs and just listening to those bikes and listening to them warming up any Speedway fan will tell you there is nothing better. For me, the celebration of Speedway is the event that lets you know Speedway season is just around the corner. The celebration of Speedway was originally the High Beach anniversary of Speedway. High Beach was the birthplace of Speedway in the UK way back in 1928. However, the facilities and parking available eventually became surplus to the event's demands. So, the event was transferred to the far more practical Paradise Wildlife Park, home to the fantastic Speedway Museum. Two of the leading proponents were Terry Stone and Bert Harkins. The WSRA originally intended to alternate between the two venues, however, since the event first moved to Paradise Wildlife Park in 2009, it's never actually returned to High Beach. It is a shame, in some ways, that the February gathering in High Beach no longer takes place. The King's Oak pub and the surrounding area just oozes history. You can almost feel the ghosts of Speedway's past watching over you and watching over this sacred ground. There is a museum just behind the King's Oak and there is a little plaque that was donated by the WSRA commemorating the first ever meeting at High Beach. I do hope there is a way of returning back to this venue one day, even if it's a separate event, especially for the 100th anniversary which is creeping up soon. I do understand why they decided to move the event to Paradise Wildlife Park 
although the romantic in me does still love coming to High Beach. Now the question is, why is there a Speedway Museum in a zoo? Peter Sampson of the Sampson family who bought the zoo in 1984 was a former Speedway rider for clubs like Hackney. Vic White, secretary of the VSRA, had come into possession of vintage Speedway memorabilia and needed something to do with it. Peter's friend, Dingle Brown, suggested to Peter the possibility of building a Speedway museum at the park. Peter eventually agreed, but with the caveat that he wouldn't be able to fund the entire project. He was still busy trying to turn the zoo around at the time. Former rider George Barclay, who run the Speedway Riders Union at the time, the SRA, and his partner Linda Christie went round all the UK tracks and raised money through bucket collections. Veteran Speedway Riders Association members and other Speedway enthusiasts also donated and eventually the money they needed was raised. True to his word, Peter Sampson helped fund the build and the Speedway Museum project began. ex rally rider Terry Stone was monumental in organising the museum's launch and the loan of bikes for the displays. Elaine and Mac McDougall did the artwork. Other significant contributors were Norman Jacobs, Ted Eid and Peter Raffle. On the 23rd of April 2007, the museum was open for business. Eventually, Vic White and the WSRA took over the operation of the museum as a charity. Now, the committee members and volunteers, like Bert Harkins, run the museum, a tireless effort for a great cause, and we all get to enjoy the fruits of their actions. Now, for those of you who don't know, the WSRA is the World Speedway Riders Association. It was started as a social in 1957 by Peter Arnold, who wanted to provide an easy way for former riders to keep in touch. The Veteran Speedway Riders Association was renamed in 2006 to the WSRA to widen the organisation's appeal to a younger audience. World Speedway champions become honorary members of the WSRA. The organisation proactively supports Speedway, past, present and future, if you're a hardened fan of Speedway, then join. They have 600 members and host many fantastic events, including the celebration, the spring luncheon, and the annual dinner and awards night. People like Carl Fiala, a strong advocate for sharing Speedway on social platforms, are helping to drive the sport forwards and let people know it's still very much alive today. Organisations like the WSRA and projects such as the Speedway Museum are crucial to Speedway because they keep the memory of the sport alive, even whilst the amount of active tracks in the area is on the decline. So I just wish to say to everyone involved in the WSRA and in the museum a big, big thank you for all your efforts. We know it's all voluntary and we all very much appreciate the time you take to make these facilities available and to organise these things. Paradise Wildlife Park is a wonderful place. Looking around you can see just how much the owners and staff care about the beautiful animals and the public facilities. Aside from the excellent facilities, the move from High Beach also means you get to enjoy the animals as part of the admission price. You can really see just looking around how much they've invested in these facilities, especially in the last few years. If you went back to the 1960s and 70s, a time when Speedway was in its element, you would have found a very different zoo located on this site. As it was then known, Broxbourne Zoo was privately owned by Cyril Stamp up to the mid 70s and then Peter Phipps until 1984. The zoo had an awful reputation back then and it wasn't until the Sampson family took it over in 1984 that the zoo we know and love today started to take shape. After securing the purchase, the Sampsons faced many challenges, not least complying with the Zoo Licensing Act of 1981. It was a long and hard road, but in 1985 the zoo was reopened as Paradise Park and Woodland Zoo in 1986. It wasn't until the 1990s that the zoo really drove forwards, opening the Tiger Lodge for the gorgeous Bengal and Siberian Tigers. The zoo then adopted the Paradise Wildlife Park name we know today. Since then, the park has gone from strength to strength, adding new enclosures for loads of incredible new species. The Animal Resource Centre with an in-house veterinary and research centre. 
The park bought the Big Cat Foundation in Kent and the new organisation was established called Wildlife Heritage Foundation. They've also got an area dedicated to something even older than your average Speedway fan. The dinosaurs! The kids absolutely love the dino walk. The animatronics, they are fantastic. And you can get drawn into the atmosphere they're trying to create. There's a cool little train ride for the kids to enjoy with a few surprises that I won't spoil. We are an unusual breed. Being a Speedway fan, it feels like an exclusive club. If you tell someone you like Formula One, the theatre, listening to music, dancing, reading, they'll understand what you mean. That's not so if you harbour a passion for Britain's best kept secret. When we're at the track, we're surrounded by people who know the terminology and understand the obsession. Driving 300 miles to watch a speedway match is commonplace and even expected amongst the sport's faithful followers. The celebration of speedway has evolved from the annual tribute to the sport's inaugural meeting. It has become something far more unique. It's a chance to take our worlds and naturally mix them. We can enjoy our passion for speedway while spending quality time with the people we cherish. Our friends and family, children and grandchildren can join us and enjoy the day in a place catered for everyone. It's a place where we can connect and share a day genuinely tailored for everyone. When the name was changed to Paradise all those years ago, no Speedway fan ever realized that this was foreshadowing for what this place would become.